Welcome back, everybody. Today we're um, we're diving into something a little different. We're going to be looking at the origins of the Wazir family name. And get this, we're doing it through excerpts from tribal melodies of Himachal Pradesh, Lahal Valley. It's a collection of folk songs. And yeah, and what makes it even cooler is our source is actually a descendant of the Wazir line. Talk about a direct link to history, right? I, that's amazing. It's incredible what you can learn from these folk songs, you know, <laughs> like you get a real feel for uh, for the values and beliefs of the time told through these stories that have been passed down for generations. It's true. Okay, so the story centers around this guy, Wazir Ramsnehi. He was a pretty big deal in the Chambuk village of Lahal Valley, served as the tax collector under the Kulu King. Now I know what you're thinking, tax collector. Not exactly the most glamorous job, right? right. Yeah. But this is where it gets interesting. Okay. Yeah. So what's the deal with this Wazir title? Back then, the Kulu King had a ton of power over this whole region. So being his appointed Wazir, well, it meant you were more than just some bureaucrat. You were like the king's right-hand man. Yeah. You know, holding a position of serious influence and prestige. That makes sense. And it seems like Wazir Snehi, he really embraced that status. The song describes his mansion in such detail. It's crazy. I'm talking lion carvings at the entrance. Whoa. Images of gods and deities all over the walls. And get this. The ceiling. Totally decked out with scenes of Saint Sears, even the legendary pandavas from that epic Mahaparta. Oh, wow. Yeah, you really get a sense of the grandeur, the wealth this guy commanded. It's like he was making a statement, Yeah. you know, about his power and his piety. It wasn't just about showing off how rich he was. It was about aligning himself with authority, huh? earthly and divine. That's a good point. Okay, so Wazir Ramsnehi had four sons, right? And obviously he wanted to find them wives. But it wasn't just a matter of picking any eligible young women. This guy had standards. He had very specific criteria in mind. Beauty, obedience, and cultural alignment. Pretty standard for the time, I guess. Yeah. But what does this search tell us about the values back then? Well, his journey itself is pretty telling. He traveled all over the place, village to village, carefully observing the women, noting how their environment seemed to shape them. You know, oh, well. He believed that a woman raised in like a harsh climate would naturally be tougher, more resilient, yeah. while one from a more gentle area would be more refined and docile. Wow. So he thought geography was like intertwined with a person's very being. It's like they believe where you come from shapes who you are at your core. So he wasn't just looking for wives for his sons. He was making sure his specific lineage continued, one shaped by bloodlines and the land itself. That's some deep stuff. It really is. This wasn't just a marriage. It was about creating a legacy. Exactly. So eventually he decides on brides from the village of Hyunda. Now, why Junda? Well, the song highlights their natural beauty and the strict moral code they were raised with. Seems Wazir Ram Snehi was really impressed with their grace and their upbringing. It wasn't just about looks, it was about character. And remember, this was back when marriage alliances were crucial for maintaining power. Picking brides from Shunda, a village known for its upstanding citizens. Well, that would make the wazir even more influential. Good point. So the song actually goes into a lot of detail about the marriage negotiations. You hear about this back and forth between the wazir and the family of one of the brides, a young woman named Sulaki. It's this blend of formality and tradition. They're discussing dowries, exchanging gifts, you know, all according to custom. But you can also sense the excitement. It's there under the surface. For sure. You're right. Even with all the rituals and protocols, you can feel the human element. The anticipation, the, the hopes and dreams they have for this union. It reminds us that even in these rigid social structures, people are still driven by love and family. And wanting a secure future. Exactly. Speaking of emotions, there's this really powerful moment in the song. It's where Salaki leaves her family to go to Chembuk. You can just feel the weight of that transition, you know, like that bittersweet mix of sadness leaving home. And the excitement of a new chapter as the wazir's daughter-in-law. Yeah, it really highlights what was expected of women back then. Marriage often meant leaving everything you knew behind. Adapting to a new household, embracing these roles of wife and mother, it was a huge turning point in a woman's life. Full of challenges, but also new opportunities. Yeah, it's easy to overlook these little details, but it makes you realize behind all the historical stuff, there were real people just living their lives. Absolutely. And that's what makes these folk songs so valuable. We get to see the everyday experiences of people from another time. It helps us connect with history in a more personal way. 
For sure. There's something else in the song I found interesting. Remember that description of the Wazir's mansion? Yeah, with all the carvings. Yeah. Well, along with the images of Vishnu and Lakshmi, it mentions carvings of seven snake gods. Snake gods, huh? Yeah, I thought that was pretty unique. That is fascinating. Those are probably Nagas. They're often associated with water fertility and protection in Hindu mythology. Okay. And seeing them with Vishnu and Lakshmi. Well, it suggests this interesting blend of religious beliefs. Remember, Hinduism is super diverse. It has all these regional variations and local deities. Right, so it's not just about following a strict set of rules. It's about adapting your faith to your own circumstances. Exactly. This detail gives us a glimpse into the complexity of religious life in the Lahal Valley. It wasn't just about big temples and rituals. It was about personalizing your faith and incorporating local traditions. Right. Okay, so shifting gears a bit. The song also touches on a theme that's pretty universal. The rise and fall of power and prosperity. We hear about what happened to Chembuk after Wazir Ramsnehi died. Oh, yeah. This once grand village with its amazing mansion, it eventually falls into ruin. What happened? Well, the song doesn't really say, but I'm guessing it was a few things, you know? Maybe trade routes changed. Maybe there was political upheaval. Even natural disasters could have shifted things. That makes sense. It's like a reminder that nothing lasts forever. Yeah, even the most powerful people and prosperous communities, they're all subject to the forces of history. True. But what's interesting is that even though things change, the Wazir family name is still around. Yeah. It's like a symbol of their resilience, a link to the past that could have been forgotten. It shows how powerful family history can be. It shapes who we are even as the world keeps changing. It really gets you thinking, huh? About how we're all connected to the past. This whole deep dive into the Wazir family, it's got me thinking about my own family history and all that. It's amazing how these personal stories can teach us about history in general. And for the Wazir family, their story is literally a part of this folk song. It's become like an oral history, a gur, they call it, passed down through generations. Wow, it's more than just a song. It's a living testament to their legacy. Right, and it shows us that history isn't just about big events and dates. It's about people's lives, their choices, their relationships, and the impact they had on their communities. Yeah. The Wazir story gives us this window into a very specific time and place in the Lahal Valley. We see their social structures, their cultural practices, even their art. It's true. It's like we're putting together a puzzle, and each detail adds to the bigger picture. What really struck me was the contrast between Chembuk during Wazir on Snehi's time and what happened to it later. The song describes this lively village, you know, a real center of activity, and then it just fades away. It's sad. Yeah, it reminds us that even power and prosperity can disappear. Exactly. Nothing stays the same forever. True. Okay. But even though Chimbuk declined, the Wazir family name survived. Yeah. It represents their resilience, their mm -hmm. connection to a past that could have been lost. I like that. It's a testament to the power of family history. Yeah. So we started off wanting to learn about the origins of the Wazir family name. And I think we did that, but we also learned so much more about the Lahal Valley at that time. Yeah, like their social structures, their beliefs, yeah. their art. It's fascinating. And what's really cool is that we learned all this from just one folk song. It gave us a look into the lives of everyday people, their hopes, their dreams, their struggles. That's what I love about these deep dives. They make history come alive. They really do. Well, I'm feeling inspired to dig into my own family history now. You should. Who knows what I might find. It's a journey worth taking, for sure. And for everyone listening, we hope this deep dive got you thinking about your own family history and all the stories waiting to be discovered. There's a whole world out there just waiting to be explored. Until next time, everyone keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep digging into the fascinating world of history. See you next time.